Guten Morgen an Tag 3 auf der Milliwes Bühne. Ich hoffe, ihr habt alle ähm, gut geschlafen und seid jetzt frisch und munter für die äh, Programmpunkte. Genau, und äh, wir haben hier auch schon den... Ah! Ja, yeah, but we English. talk in yeah, English. In Sorry. <coughs> Good morning on day three on the Milliway stage. I hope you all had a good sleep and now uh, we do the program also as announced in English and not in German, so hopefully everybody is very happy. Uh, with me is the uh, first speaker, Razzo, and he will talk about read and manipulate network traffic on Android with Mitem proxy. Give him a warm welcome and enjoy the talk. Yeah, okay, so thank you for the warm welcome. And as the title already suggests, I want to talk about four things. First of all, I want to tell you a bit what Mitten Proxy, the tool itself, is. Afterwards, I want to give you some examples on how to read network traffic with Mitten Proxy. Then I want to give you a brief introduction on how to set it up with Android. And afterwards, we see more interesting examples on how to manipulate network traffic with Mitten Proxy. So first of all, what is Mitten Proxy? So they def define themselves as a free and open source interactive HTTPS proxy under the MIT license. Uh, it was created by Aldo Cortesi, Maximilian Hills, and Thomas Kriechbaumer in 2010. And yeah, Mitten Proxy, of course, the Mitten stands for men in the middle. Uh, men in the middle. So uh, you can use it to intercept network traffic between a server and a client. And as the name of the talk already suggests, it's about Mitten Proxy and Android. So of course there are other tools uh, like Charles or Burp Suite, but uh, I like the terminal more and Mitten Proxy is like mostly based on the terminal, so this is why I like Mitten Proxy. And it also seems like that you can uh, set up Mitten Proxy with iOS. However, I have never tried it. There's also a uh, like tutorials online where it worked with iOS 15, which is last year's iOS. It seems there are errors with iOS 16. I, I, I can't say anything about this. You have to try this yourself. And maybe as a small motivation, why do I even want to talk about Midden Proxy? There were two 3C talks by Christopher Weatherhead and others at 35C3 and 36C3, and there they intercepted different apps and looked whether um, how they interact with the Facebook SDK in the one talk and in the other they talked at menstruation apps for women and checked how they sent private data to um, to uh, networks where you don't or to companies which you rather don't want to have your private uh, data and this talk here should be like a more hands-on approach on how to actually use MIT and proxy to do the same thing uh, so yeah, this is what I want to talk about. So first of all, as a small introduction, we will just see how Mitten Proxy uh, works. So as examples here, uh, I pre-recorded some videos. Um, on the right, we will always have a, an Android phone. And in the left, we have the terminal with Mitten Proxy. And we will intercept the traffic of this uh, network. So now we open Mitten Proxy. And now we open our small uh, sample app. So on the right, you see the Android app, uh, which is just a button which downloads text and will display this text in the text view above. So the default will change to Hello World in a second. Uh, so, OK. And now you can see when we, when we press the button, then we can see on the left, we get the flows. So a flow is basically a request response pair. And when we now press on the flow, we can uh, open it, see what actually uh, happened there. So in the, for the request, we see there are headers. Uh, or we can see all of the headers which were sent. In the response tab, we can see uh, all of the response headers and the decoded body. And there are even more details like the timestamp, the algorithms used for encryption, and so on. So. Uh, this is basically what you, this is like the very basics of Mitten Proxy. So you can uh, see all of the data. 
And then again with Q, you can uh, close all, uh, close this program again. And yeah, that's the basics. So now we want to have a small, a first small example, which is actually already kind of powerful. So we want to um, convert one of these requests inside a curl script, which you can use then not on your Android device, but rather on your uh, computer to execute the same API, which can be already really powerful if you have, for example, an API which you can normally only access through an app. With Mitten Proxy, you can export these requests to a curl script and can use it for your own automation on your laptop. So uh, when you just press E on one of these requests, you get the small, I just go back a bit here, you can see the small uh, window where you can just select one of these uh, formats and we want to use curl here. Then down below a small, um, a small window will open where you just type in the, the name of the script you want to save it in. Um, and now we, we um, stored this in mitem1.sh. And if we now close mitem proxy and look inside the script, we will see we get basically the request of mitem proxy as a curl script with all of the headers and the uh, URL. And if we now uh, just execute the script uh, from our PC, we see we get the same response, this hello world text, uh, without using the app. And al as already mentioned, this can be helpful if you, if you want to access some API, which you normally can only access through an app. Okay, so now that we have already seen some interesting exa examples, I just want to give you a brief introduction on how to set up uh, Mitten Proxy with Android. I don't want to go through all of these steps. You can do this at home or after the talk. I just want to give you some interesting considerations here. So all of this is based on a GitHub comment inside the Mitten Proxy repository. And what, what we basically want is, uh, what we basically do is we set up an Android emulator on a Unix-like machine like macOS or Linux with Mitten Proxy. And the reason we use an emulator is because Android made it uh, rather difficult with Android 9 to install a root certificate. So maybe as a brief, so what we basically have to do to set it up is we have, to uh, we have to install the Mitten Proxy certificate as a root authority on our Android smartphone. And uh, Google made it rather hard to install such certificates with Android 9 and onwards. And furthermore, it's also difficult to install such a certificate if you have Google Play on your device. This is why we use, uh, the easiest way to set up Mitten Proxy with Android is to use an emulator with an old Android version. And also without Google Play. So at one point, if you set up the emulator, it should look, l you have a window where you can select all of the SDKs. And here you should use like a, an old Android version without Google. And of course, you can always sideload APKs, which you use like apps uh, through the terminal. And once you have this emulator, you just execute all of these commands over here, which, which basically just uh, copy the certificate from Mitten Proxy onto the uh, emulator. And afterwards, each time you want to start the emulator, you execute this one line down below here, which just opens the emulator with the correct port so that Mitten Proxy can connect. Okay, so now that we have briefly talked about how to set everything up, I want to uh, give more examples on how to uh, yeah, do stuff with Mitten Proxy. And now we want to manipulate data. So what we want to do next is, instead of um, showing hello world here, we want to change the text to hello camp without changing the server nor the app. And this is where Mitten Proxy is handy because it can intercept the traffic, pause it, then you can edit it. And then uh, you can just... Uh, Ex or y we can display the different text. Okay, so now if you press on the button, you will see we just normally get hello world. And now if you press I, we can create our own interception filter. So down below here, you can now see we, we uh, installed one tilde b.hello, 
which basically says pause all of the requests and responses which contain uh, the string hello inside the body. And if we now uh, execute or uh, click the button again, we will see uh, the next flow is paused or intercepted. You can see it's, uh, it's red instead of green. And if, you now, uh, if we now just open this flow, you can, we can already see in the header here, it's now not response, but response intercepted. And if we open this tab and press uh, E, we can edit this response as we like. We want to change the response body and we want to change it from hello world to hello camp. And when we now press A, so we changed it, now we press A on this flow again, and we can see we get now the text hello camp instead of hello world. And if we press I again, we can remove the filter, and if we now press the button again, nothing is intercepted, we will just get the text as usual, or the normal text from the server. Okay, and here I also want to give you a small detour if you don't like the terminal as much as I do, there are also different front ends for Mitim Proxy. There's also one called Mitim Web. You just execute it the same way as Mitim Proxy before. And if we now open our app and click on the button, we can afterwards change to the browser. That's a bit small, I'm sorry, but uh, we basically have the same data as before. Uh, we can just click on our flows and then we get uh, request response data. Uh, so if you if you like the mouse more or want to um, want to uh, do everything inside your browser, you can also use Mitim Web and basically achieve the same thing. And like the Mitim Proxy front end and also the Mitim Web front end are both interactive, so you change the data on the fly and yeah, you can fiddle around with it while it's coming. But once you get the hang of it and actually know what you want to do, you can also use Mitim Dump, where you can just uh, write a, sm a small Python script beforehand and can you can intercept data with this automatically without uh, doing it interactively while you are work or th while the data comes in. So just as a small example here, I created or I, I wrote a small Python script which uh, takes responses and we basically do the same thing as before. So if the content of the response, so the body contains the word hello, we print a small uh, print lock uh, with intercepted so that we know that something changed. And afterwards we change the content from, uh, we change it to hello camp. We also have to append the B here because content is not a string but a byte array and the B will convert it for us, but this is like technicalities. And if we now execute the small Python script with mitim dump minus s and the script, and just as usual open our app and click on our button, we will see we get these intercepted messages and always see hello camp because this interception uh, script will always execute because all of these bodies contain the word hello and it will always change the text to hello camp. Um, Exactly. And this was already everything I wanted to show you, just as a, uh, as a small recap. So we looked on how to uh, intercept network traffic with Mitten Proxy on Android. We saw the three different front ends. We saw the terminal uh, interactive one, which is Mitten Proxy. Then we saw the interactive browser one, which is Mitten Web. And we saw the non-interactive terminal-based one, which is Mitim Dump. We also uh, looked a bit on how to set up, oops, sorry, how to set up Mitim Proxy with an Android emulator. And if you want to learn even more about this, if I, if this talk started interest um, of you to uh, um, to learn a bit more about man in the middle stuff and Mitim Proxy in itself, there is this wonderful documentation of Mitim Proxy at this URL. And I, uh, this is basically also the source where I everything uh, got from. And Mitten Proxy is also a, a very cool tool because it regularly gets new features. So they also already have like a mode where you can intercept HTTP 3 traffic. 
or there's also a way now uh, still in beta uh, in beta where you can um, where you can connect Mitten proxy with a device by using WireGuard, so through a VPN, which probably makes everything much easier and you don't have to do the hassle of setting up an emulator, but it's still in, uh, better, but it looks really nice because you just have to scan a QR code and then it should be set up, by, but I haven't tried it out now. So there's only one thing left to tell you, which is uh, thank you. Thank you for your attention and we can go on with the questions from your side. Uh. And are there any questions? So does this wire thing, WireGuard thing in beta also works with HTTP 3 because we still need the certificate somehow? Um. I'm not completely sure. As I said, I only looked like at samples because it's right now it's a bit uh, tricky to mess uh, to to set everything up. But like you have to enable HTTP 3 uh, as its own flag, and there's also like this WireGuard flag. I'm not 100% sure if they work together, but at least I haven't found anything that does not work together. So you can try it out. Maybe it works. I'm also not completely sure which magic happens below, like this all of this QR code wire card setup. Um, I guess there will be more documentation on this when it f when it's really when it's released. Is th is this okay? Okay. Are there further questions or from the internet? Okay, the internet is ah, still sleeping. There's one question. Oh, sorry. Um, what about um, certificate pinning? Will it uh, somehow destroy all the um, possibilities yeah. you have to, to intercept? And that can be done within uh, an app. So if yeah. an app uses uh, certificate pinning, then you just see the encrypted traffic. Yes. So if you, if you as an app developer enable certificate, or you disable. Uh, so when you do certificate pinning, you basically um, you cannot use Mitten proxy anymore. That's true. But yeah. Hi, thank you. Um, the question I have is related to replaying uh, yeah. network traffic. So in a, let's say, a regular application, there's um, timeouts, retry requests, etc. How does that work with Midden Proxy in the sense that, let's say, you intercept a request, then it gets paused, but eventually the OS will just say, well, this doesn't come back, I'm just going to cancel it. Yeah. So, of course, you have to work against the timeout. Um, the, of co when you do it interactively, of course, you have to hurry up a bit. Uh, but as you saw with Mitem Dump, so if you do this program programmatically, it's, it's basically instanced instantaneously, so there shouldn't be any problems with the timeout. But of course, you shouldn't just intercept the request, then grab a coffee and do your stuff afterwards, so yeah, then you can can get into trouble. Yeah. So we reached the end of our time. Therefore, I suggest we thank our speaker again. And thank you.